1932, scientists discovered something odd about a certain river fish. Every single one was female. Asexually reproducing animals had been found before, but this fish couldn't do that. If you put a bunch of them in a tank, they couldn't make more fish. They decided to call the fish the Amazon Molly, named after the mythical, all-female, tribe of warriors. DNA analysis has revealed that the last male Amazon Molly died thousands of years ago, and yet these fish can't reproduce on their own. So how do you make babies if all the males in your species are dead? Well, it turns out that in order to reproduce, an Amazon Molly actually steals a male from another species. The DNA from these unsuspecting males never actually makes it to the egg. Instead, the sperm just triggers the egg to begin dividing all on its own. This ensures that all the Amazon Molly's offspring are female, and more importantly, all are clones. If you think about it, needing two parents doesn't make much sense. Under natural selection, the goal of life is to pass on your genes, but with sexual reproduction, you're throwing away half of them. When you reproduce, only half your offspring's genes come from you. The other half come from your partner. If the goal of life is to pass on your genes, well, then this seems like the ultimate waste. The problem isn't really the sex, the problem is the males. That's because males can't actually produce their own offspring. Instead, they have to rely on females to do it for them. Think about it, if all men suddenly disappeared, we could regenerate the species using a sperm bank. If all women disappeared, well, that'd be the end of us. To see why this male problem should be such a disadvantage, let's compare a sexually reproducing species with males and females to an asexual all-female species. If each asexually reproducing individual has two offspring, its population doubles in the next generation. But for the sexually reproducing species, the population stays the same size, because the males aren't actually making any children. It's the females that have to make both kids. This is known as the two-fold cost of males. To reproduce, half your genes are wasted making males, which won't actually be able to build offspring of their own. I know it seems like it just has to be this way, but in some species, both individuals reproduce. This is true of slugs, which are hermaphroditic, having both male and female parts. They exchange sperm with their partner, and both partners lay eggs. Of course, the best solution to the male problem is to get rid of them. Some lizards have all-female species, and are able to reproduce without any sperm at all. This process is called parthenogenesis, when the egg develops all on its own into an offspring. Parthenogenesis even sometimes starts in humans, although it's never actually led to a baby. Why do we have males, then, if some species can do without them? The usual answer is that the benefit of sexual reproduction is diversity. If some members of a species mutate to reproduce sexually, then they can eventually bring together good combinations of genes that will make their offspring more fit. This, however, is a long-term benefit. In the short run, due to the two-fold cost of males, asexual members of a species should be able to outcompete their siblings into extinction. And that's the problem. We can understand why males are useful now, but how could that very first male ever overcome the two-fold cost so we could get to now? Why we have males and why we have sex remains one of those great unsolved mysteries, like the origin of life itself. So, will humans ever solve the male problem? Will we ever get to pass on all our genes, make us an all-female species? Almost certainly not. For starters, humans and other mammals do something called genomic imprinting where for some genes, only the copy that comes from the father actually works, while for others, only the mother's copy is good. This means you need both a maternal and a paternal genome to make a baby. And finally, for whatever reason men originally evolved, once they did, they became objects of natural selection in their own right. Natural selection reduced the role of males in some species, but for us, it took a different route, using men as essential caregivers. Humans were able to survive with our pitifully helpless young and long childhoods because men evolved to stick around and nurture their young, much more so than males in other species. Of course, there's no rule of evolution that says it has to be this way. We can imagine an intelligent species evolving that was all female, and maybe it even is in our planet's future. Some reptiles have their sex determined not by X and Y, but by the temperature of the sand their eggs lay in. Eggs in the colder part of the sand become male, while eggs in the hotter part become female. One study of Pacific green sea turtles in Australia found that, due to global warming, 
99% of the population was female. We can imagine a distant future where humanity has been destroyed by climate change and our place is taken by an intelligent reptilian species that evolved to be all female in this hot new environment. It all sounds kind of crazy, but would anyone 65 million years ago have predicted that all the dinosaurs would be wiped out and this tiny squirrel-like creature would evolve into us? Maybe it really is that the future is female. What would society be like if we had evolved without sex? Let me know what you think in the comments below and also let me know what you want to see next time. Thanks for watching.